Welcome to this week's Swarf and Chips. Wow, what a show we have lined up for you today. We visit four extraordinary manufacturing companies and a large, impressive machine installation with Starak at a top secret location. Will we ever find out where this was filmed? The companies in question this week are Fraser Nash with a Renishaw additive manufactured part for this week's Cycle Chime Challenge. And this is a chance for you to get involved and win yourself a Swarf and Chips goodie bag. GPR Engineering, well, we're taking a blast to the past and back to the future with their new Matsura MX520. Now, do you feel your processing times are too slow? Well, they're not at advanced engineering and that's where we're gonna discuss productivity gains with the smooth control. And finally, we discuss investment at Playlight, one hit machining with a small footprint, all happening on today's Sports and Chips. Really exciting show today, but we've got our 100th episode just around the corner. How fast has it gone? It's incredible. Ah, oh, I know. The memory's back to the first episode. Yeah, can you remember that? I know. I can yeah. remember it very it's my, well. My year anniversary recently. Is it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's gone quick. No prizes for that one. <laughs> um, just to give you a bit of a heads up, I know you don't know anything yet. We haven't told anyone about the 100th episode, but if you enjoyed the Christmas show, then the 100th episode is bigger and better. It's going to be a chance for you to get involved as well but we'll let you know more very very it's be shortly fun. lots of winnings it is going to be very fun uh geo any updates with the network yeah mtd network have been uh, traveling all over the uk visiting end user companies finding out about new technologies if you um, want mtd network to visit you if you've got anything new that you would like to showcase give us a call and a massive congratulations to last week's Cycle Time Challenge winner. Now, it was seven hours, wasn't it, Paul, it for was. the if, Eiffel Tower? If you remember printing that, that Eiffel Tower mm -hmm. yeah, from on the Matsura Lumex machine, it was seven hours. So congratulations. Do contact us here at MTD, inquiries at mtdcnc.com. So we'll be putting the winner down there, are we? Yeah, Is we'll it? put the winner down there and contact us so we can send you your goodie bag. So let's kick this off. Last week we had the TCT show and this is another great additive manufacturing application at Fraser Nash. Can you guess how long it takes for this week's Cycle Time Challenge? So guys, I'm here with Andy in the south of England at Fraser Nash Manufacturing and we've got some additive manufactured parts here. Andy, what is it? Uh, so this is a temporary air, uh, airframe fastener um, for the aerospace industry. Um, so what it does is it aligns all the panels properly uh, before they rivet it in. We print around 25,000 of these a year, uh, all in-house on the Renishaw machines, and then finish machines using the five axes. Mm -hmm. So no prototyping, this is a real part on a real airplane? Yeah, this is full serial production part, has been for the last 18 months. And how many is on that plate, roughly? Uh, it's 583 on this plate. Roughly? Roughly. So there we have it guys, how long to produce 583 parts in steel, additive manufactured on the Renishaw AM machine. Back to you in the studio. Any guesses, gents? I'd be interested to know a little bit more about the process really. What, 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 obviously the, the, the printing, we can see that, but what's the five axis part on it? Mm -hmm. I mean, they look quite detailed kind of pins, don't they? For me, oh, I, I would probably guess with both operations, 10 hours? Mm, I'd say four hours, I'd say. I'd, I'd say a lot, a lot less. less. A lot of detail. I know it doesn't yeah. when you're printing, but yeah. Okay then. Well, this is your chance to get involved. Please put your comments and guesses in the comments box below and you too can win your very own Swarf and Chips goodie bag. So next up, Joe visits GPR and investigates their history and latest investment. So Vernon, tell me about GPR. Well, GPR has been going since 1984 as a limited company, originally started in 77 by the original founders um, and we've been going as a limited company ever since. Uh, we've got about nine people here, um, six CNC's and two CNC lathes. What technology have you got on site? It's mostly Hasses, we've got four Hasses here now and then we've got one small Emco lathe. Mm -hmm. And I know you've got your latest edition over here. Yes, we bought this um, 18 months ago, um, very pleased with it, um, very good machine. Uh, the Matsura MX520. Mm -hmm. um, very pleased with the quality of it, the speed that it does the work. Um, couldn't ask for anything better, really. And it's put you in another level, you said? Without a doubt. We've got work for this machine which we wouldn't have got without it. You know, there's um, 
quite heavy components, steel components we bought and um, we've been doing on it, and also the aluminium parts. So you're going to buy another? I wouldn't hesitate in buying another one if I had the space. You know what, Geo? how many times have we been saying, you know, if you're not investing, you're not moving forwards. In fact, if you're not investing, you're moving backwards. Absolutely, Lindsay. And I think another great example, and he even mentioned himself that his, his, his latest investment is he wouldn't be winning the work that he's currently winning without that machine. And it mm. t t t opens up new marketplaces for yeah. you. You've got to invest. At the recent A&B show, I was talking to a machine tool supplier who were talking about the differences between the way they invest, for example, in China as, as to the, what they do here. And in China, they speculate, they buy a machine and then they go to win the work. Mm -hmm. As opposed yeah. to here, we often try and win the work and then buy the machine. Now, don't get me wrong, it's very easy for us to sit here and say, go out and spend 100, yeah. 200,000 pounds on a machine tool. That's not what we're saying, but it is just a difference in mentality. It looks like this, uh, this chap has said, right, I'm going to buy a machine and then I'm going to fill it with work. Mm. And, what uh, I love about that scene there, Paul, is they've got the Bridgeport manual, they've got the Haas machines free axis, now they've moved into a fifth axis machine. They're 1977, they're just evolving and going and from like strength to strength. Oh, no. yes, I like that. Good spot. <laughs> Not product placement. <laughs> <laughs> no, not at all. So, still to come, a great productivity gain at Advanced Engineering UK Limited. You'll be astounded. There's no gimmicks here whatsoever. We were just as amazed as we hope you will be too. There's a machine installation with Mark at a secret location with Starag. But first, we all want a fast turnaround, don't we? <laughs> well, Paul visited Playlight to find out more. Uh, today I've travelled to Kent, I'm in Sittingbourne, I'm at Playlight Limited. Uh, this is a fascinating company, in fact, a business that I came into many years ago before Tony owned it. Tony, when did you and your colleague uh, buy this company? Uh, we bought uh, Playlight in 2004, so 14 years ago. Uh, was, it, was it the right thing for you to do? Was it a good decision? Yes, it was. It was a nerve-wracking decision, um, but it's, a, it's been a real challenge. But it's nice to take the company from its older days into a more modern approach, really really taking to a better commercial market. Uh, what's the split of the work that you're doing here? Who are you making components for? Uh, we do a lot of motorsport work, uh, aerospace, uh, just do medical and other commercial, uh, other commercial customers. And we, we often on Swarf and Chips, we're looking at technology that's um, available from UK suppliers and global suppliers. Uh, the, these are pretty fascinating, these Brother Speedio M140X2s. Uh, why did you buy these machines, Tony? Um, to solve our issues with turning and milling parts, uh, you can turn a mill on these parts. It's got five axis capability, very, very quick, very nimble machine, very productive. Um, so yeah. they're a one hit machining solution, are they? A lot of your other machines around the works, I sense you may have to move parts from one machine to another. Yeah. But the idea here is you're doing it all in one hit. Yeah, it, it, exactly that, exactly that. And because you're doing that, you're solving potential problems of accuracy, concentricity, tolerance in, it's, it's, it's worked very well for us. Uh, your first experience with Brother as well, I believe, you're, you're awash with different brands of machines uh, here. H have these uh, been as good as others, if not better, in, in the product they've supplied and uh, the company behind it? Yes, considering the size of the machine, it's a very small footprint, but the machine's been very robust, very quick, very nimble, very accurate. They've been very pleased. So for buyers and other engineers watching, there is an opportunity for them to subcontract parts to you and be able to make them probably more productively than maybe other people, because you can do them in one hit. Can you just summarise for me, Tony, Playlight Limited, just tell us three of your strengths here as a company and why people should talk to you. Well, since myself and my partner bought the company uh, 14 years ago, the one thing we've tried to do is keep reinvesting in, in new plant. And, and the reason for that is to increase our capacity, uh, keep our machines up to date, keep them accurate and reliable, and give our customers the best possible turnaround and product that we can in their required delivery you know, restraints. So Paul, a machine shop packed with machines. Incredible machines, mill turn, turning at sort of 3000 RPM, but this is about the combination of one hit machining. Um, Tony here bought this company, as he said, a few years ago. He, he bought one machine and then he bought two. That just shows how mm. much of a, a return he must have got from these machines. Yeah. Uh, what do you know about these machines? I, I love them. Everywhere you go and you see Brother Machines, the word productivity gets mentioned. And they are so super fast, aren't they? And like you say, you know when you usually see a mill turn, you usually see them, um, the machine flipped on its side, you know, but this is a vertical mill turn. Um, and it's you, to have that... Uh, turning feature in such a small envelope 
it really opens loads of doors it, it's and more rigid multiple well. operations. When you've got a turning centre with milling function, you're relying uh, to, to do milling without maybe having the same heavy duty capabilities you have with a milling machine mm. and the turning. So for example, the turning, uh, the turning tool holders are held actually in the milling turret as well. So you've got far more stability, so you can produce accurate parts far, far, very, very quickly. Uh, and as, as he said, you know, buying two machines as opposed to... So he's happy with Brother. What is it, I know you've just said, but what, what is it about Brother that he's so happy with? I think the Brother machine offers you very, very high speed machining. Uh, multi multi-task machining as you see here mm. uh, very uh, precise machining so for components such as the medical sector automotive and stuff that he's doing here, you can achieve that uh, so really it's like Joe says productivity gains yeah. that is brother I think another good through. point like we've seen at other companies but you know wherever I go and I see a brother machine you don't just see one mm. you're always, yeah, once you're they've right. bought one they buy lots mm. more but and it's just fit them in because the footprints yeah. are small they're dynamic uh, you know they have all of the all of the latest technology all rolled under all one in that in that small envelope. Yeah. Mm. He's got so much capability within a small envelope. I think, that, and the speed, the yeah. speed as well that goes and along with that. And when you've got that. one, you'd always want a brother as well. Wouldn't you? <laughs> <laughs> what about a sister, Paul? Oh, no. That's their sister company. Anyway, uh, next up, Joe visits Advanced Engineering UK Limited with his remarkable technology development. Hi guys, I'm here at Advanced Engineering UK Limited. We're going to be talking about two things. One is one of the UK's leading CNC platforms, which is the Smooth Control. And the second, a little bit of brand loyalty. I'm actually joined by David, and we're going to talk about this component, aren't we, David? Yes, yeah. So we've got this component here, which is a, uh, a pump from solid aluminium. Um, we've produced these pumps for a number of years for one of our customers. Um, now, we've found that doing these on Smooth Control, as opposed to the Mazak, again, I-500, we used before, which has got the older control on. We found about a 20% saving in cycle time. 20%? Have you changed the, the programming at all, or is it literally taking one program and putting it in a new machine? Yeah, one program, put it in the new machine, and just a straight change, exactly the same tools. So what do you put that down to? Is it, is it the processing speed, the rapids, the cut time, or maybe all of those? Yeah, it's got to be the, the processing speed, really. I, I think uh, part of the smooth, um, it processes the data quicker, so it sort of reads further in advance and you get it just knows where it's going to go earlier than the other control so in time you're going to replace all your machines one presumes a smooth control we will do obviously we've got three machines at the moment they've got smooth uh, we've got two i600s we've got a, a nexus uh no sorry not nexus a smooth lathe quick turn 250 and we've also got an i700 on order mm -hmm. which is coming in next month so you've got another machine coming yes yes so things are obviously going well here, lots of investment. Yes. But I just wanted to talk a little bit about brand loyalty as well. It, it's like a Mazak showroom here. So is it down to the technology, the people, maybe both of those elements? Well, it's down to the technology, the people, the service we receive also. You know, they're, 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 obviously the European base is just down the road in Worcester from us. So it's easy to get hold of somebody. There's always somebody available to talk to. Um, service is very good. So we use them for service now machines as well. So. They're done every year, every 12 months. You're quite a long-term partner, aren't you? When did you buy your first Mazak? Well, our oldest Mazak's uh, 11 years old. So, and we've now got, uh, with the new one, we will have 16 machines. So, yes, yeah, quite a bit of a mm. loyalty, really. But it goes hand-in-hand. Hand. If, if we weren't getting a good machine and a good service from them, we wouldn't continue to order the machines. What's fascinating here is that people won't be thinking, oh, if I get a smooth control or an upgraded control, I'm going to save 20%. There's no gimmicks, is there? No, and, and, I, and I find uh, he's only got, I think he said, two or three of the machines with the latest smooth mm -hmm. on at the moment, but yet he has a lot more machines with the older control. So it would, for me, there's a very good argument there for the Mazak salesman to go in and say, well, mm -hmm. let's take the older machines out and put new ones in because a 20% increase you, your return on your new machines would be pretty quick yeah. the other the other point i'd make about this is as well so many machine tool manufacturers focus on their hardware on their machine to make them faster so they try and make the machines lighter they might you know might change some configurations and so forth but actually this is about software you know mm. this isn't about the machine this is about what you can do with the software and the processing speed in order to gain productivity yeah. i think that i totally agree with you there i think there's only so far that you can develop a machine mechanically and i think that now that they're looking to get better productivity gains through the software i think that's absolute key 
But another really good point to make on this is that the comparison was done with a, an older Mazak with the matrix control, yeah. and this was just literally um, swapping the program. Everything was the same, the tool in the work holding. So it was literally a fantastic way to, to, to compare. Mm -hmm. But I believe that the, the, there's further gains that can also be made through the Smooth, through the CAN cycles, and through some of the other features that the Smooth offers. So 20% yeah. is absolute minimum productivity mm -hmm. gains and, and it, it, it is huge yeah. you know it's it a is. massive massive saving yeah. really and some of the components that they make at advanced engineering like that one that you've just seen on the screen there are, are phenomenal but you'd be absolutely say, phenomenal making that comparison is key so you've got the same machine all the same ingredients yeah one variable it, one exactly, variable and that's the same as when i challenge mark to a, a, a bike race we use the same bike <laughs> and, and you can then see that i'm obviously faster you know, he, he, can't, he can't move his bike slower we use the same bike yeah, I, I don't know who to believe there because I think I'm on Mark's he's not side. Here to no, he's not, he's believe not. Mark. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Well, talking of Mark, our international man of mystery, he heads over to Starag at a top secret location. Lee, quite busy and exciting times for Starag. I've just come back from AMB Stuttgart. You've got some new innovations, as always, at these shows. But you've invited us here uh, to look at uh, a Hecker X40 integrated with a Farset system. Is this a typical machine for you to install? It's a typical machine to install, so Hecat with machining centres we're very busy on. And with integration, we're, we're now integrating systems through from micro machining right up to 20 metre long components. So integration now within the UK is becoming a much bigger topic for us. I know that Starag are very strong within the aerospace and oil and gas sectors, for instance. It, it is generally the UK market and the trends in those sectors for you? We're seeing business from all sectors at the moment. Aerospace has always been busy for us. We've got some great inquiries going through in the uh, transport and industrial sector installations as well. And we're seeing a, a lot of activity now coming out of oil and gas, which is good, because that's been flat now for two or three years. And when you look at uh, this typical build that uh, we're looking at here, obviously we can't say who it's for, but is it, is it very much in one of those sectors? It's a key sector for us, it's a key product for us. It's a very fast, fairly new machine integrated into, um, into an FMS system. It's exactly what the UK is asking for at the moment. And would you say that from a, a UK perspective, it, it's very busy, Sarah getting lots of inquiries or being involved in lots of new applications? I think there's a lot of pressure on cost now, Mark. So customers are coming to us with very, very high demands from their suppliers to reduce costs. And the way to reduce costs is on faster, more reliable machines with some automation. So we're, we're looking at lights out machining, one man running multiple machines and being able to run 24 seven. And that's the only way to compete. And so do you think that we're gonna be visiting more of your uh, unique sites with some, some of the new challenges you've got on board over the next few years? I'm sure we will be, yes. Oh, are we ever going to find out where this was filmed? Very envious. Would love to have been there. I know where it is, and I tell you what, you know, when we are going to go again, and we'll be able to actually, obviously, uh, expose where 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 it is. But what I found interesting about this video is, is uh, obviously the investment and the mm. fast M system automation, but the fact that that Lee's saying here that they're after uh, cost down. You know, suppliers want cost down, and the only way you can do that is by, by automating, by uh, having total uptime, as much uptime as possible, making parts as fast as possible. Yes. And that's really what the Starak Hecate brand is about. I think it's a great, great story. I can't wait to, to see the full video from yes. Mark. So watch this space, really. Mm -hmm. I think that it's nice. It also kind of highlights, you know, the range of the machines that they have. So from very small to very large. I mean, Mark was in Germany the other week, standing on a, a uh, you know, huge machine. No, he was Colossal just a machine. Small bloke. <laughs> I like his hat and his gloves. And his gloves. He's, he's ready for winter, to be honest. <laughs> Look at him. He used to, must have used a vending machine to get those out. <laughs> Top of his head. Not the the head. abuse. <laughs> the abuse. Well, it is the end of the show, so thank you very much. Don't forget, our 100th show is coming up very, very soon. More to come over the coming days. Right, okay, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. If you want to watch any previous episodes, click on the links here. And as we always say, keep those spindles turning. <laughs>